The woke danger is not just expressed in chit-chat by soft intellectuals, but it has real-world consequences that are affecting our world today. Here are these excerpts from a talk given by Andy No. He's an independent journalist from Portland, Oregon, and listen to this. What you need to know about Antifa is that they are a transnational movement that espouses an extremist, communist, anarchist ideology. They merge the worst aspects of both communism and anarchy to form a worldview that criminalizes property ownership, wrong think, and produces endless disorder and crime. They don't just hate symbols of this country like flags and things that represent the rule of law like courthouses or law enforcement. They really despise the American philosophy, i.e. individual rights, the rule of law and freedom of expression. Antifa's far left theories and ideology was able to slip in America through academics. Herbert Marcuse and other European Marxist intellectuals fled Europe in the last century and found a home in America's academic institutions. So things like critical theory and from that critical race theory, trans ideology, intersectionality, all that was born in America's academic institutions. And you can see the effects of it today in hollowing out pretty much everything that it touches. I do think cities like Portland, Seattle, and Minneapolis, and others are possibly beyond saving. There's a critical mass of support for far-left extremism masquerading as racial justice in those areas. Notice I said critical mass, not a majority. You don't have to have a majority of people supporting what's happening. You just have to have enough, and there is enough of it there. And they vote for the politicians that enable it. Through violence, Antifa have driven out any meaningful opposition in urban liberal areas. This is a fight that liberals and the moderate left have to take on themselves. But if 2020 was any indication, that's not something they're willing to do. In fact, they're probably more likely to join in on the protests and volunteer themselves to stand in between the rioters and police. I predict further civilizational and cultural decline in the US as the critical theorists continue their successful efforts at hollowing out every institution they touch. Academe, journalism, entertainment, government, military. I'm continuing my reporting from abroad, resigned to believe that my home city is dying and that the disease killing it will continue to spread. Andy documented rioting in a lot of American cities, and especially his home, Portland, Oregon. And he actually was beaten by Antifa and wound up in the hospital with a brain bleed, and he spent most of a year recovering from that. So he sort of knows about this stuff. Now, when a close observer like No says to us that we might not be able to save some significant American cities, it's a warning to us that we're entering into some kind of a nightscape. Now, the woke phenomenon and its various manifestations represents a totalizing worldview. This kind of a movement usually ends up with a one-party group running a state or a government. In the sadly predictive novel 1984, Winston Smith's torturer says this, it is intolerable to us that an erroneous thought should exist anywhere in the world, however secret and powerless it may be. See, not even an independent thought was wanted to exist there. And this is sort of where it looks like we're going. This is the warning that he gives us. On page 155, he describes this world that we could be coming into. Every record has been destroyed or falsified. Every book has been rewritten. Every picture has been repainted. Every statue and street and building has been renamed. Every date has been altered. And that process is continuing day by day and minute by minute. History has stopped. Nothing exists except an endless present in which the party is always right. But it wasn't just Orwell. Now, Hannah Arndt, in her book here, The Origins of Totalitarianism, points out, the last century has produced an abundance of ideologies that pretend to be keys to history. And she calls totalitarianism, on page 346, the last stage in a process during which science has become an idol that will magically cure the evils of existence and transform the nature of man. Transform the nature of man? 
Now, according to Arndt, totalitarian organizations do this. They are designed to translate the propaganda lies of the movement woven around a central fiction into a functioning reality to build up, even under non-totalitarian circumstances, a society whose members act and react according to the rules of a fictitious world. So Arndt wrote in 1948, Orwell wrote in 1949, but C.S. Lewis was four years before that. C.S. Lewis, 1944, in his book, The Abolition of Man, has some interesting things to say on the same point. Very interesting that these people are talking to us uh, immediately during the war and just after it. But here's what uh, C.S. Lewis warns us. For the power of man to make himself what he pleases means, as we have seen, the power of some men to make other men what they please. The man molders of the new age will be armed with the powers of an omnicompetent state and an irresistible scientific technique. We shall get at last a race of conditioners who really can cut out all posterity into what shape they please. They are, if you like, men who have sacrificed their own share in traditional humanity in order to devote themselves to the task of deciding what humanity shall henceforth mean. Man's final conquest has proved to be the abolition of man. And now, here we are all these years later, the woke hold views constituting an alternate reality. Andy Noah's right. They hate the freedom. They hate the property rights. They hate freedom of expression. They can't stand the rule of law. And in our world, the powers that had been balanced and separated out in the Constitution to keep one part of the state from getting too much power over us, those things aren't very much separated too much anymore, are they? In fact, what you have really today is kind of a monopoly of big tech, big pharma, the state. They have a monopoly on power. And it's all pushing a certain narrative that, that is what you get everywhere. Theodore Dalrymple understood how this worked in the previous century and in our century. Quote, the purpose of communist propaganda was not to persuade or convince nor to inform, but to humiliate. And therefore, the less it corresponded to reality, the better. When people are forced to remain silent when they are being told the most obvious lies, or even worse, when they're forced to repeat the lies themselves, they lose once and for all their sense of probity. You know, probity is what's right and wrong. And he says, in some small way, they even become evil. Friend, the woke are determined to reprogram us into their fictions about race, about the pandemic, about morality, about sexuality. And we now exist in a short space in time where liberty is in process of being set aside. A section of the population is embracing a fiction which is a replacement for reality, yet which gives an atomized and morally shattered people a kind of superficial sense of meaning. Listen to Andy No again. There's a sympathy I feel for many of them because these are people who, they want community and this Antifa extremist movement ideology gives them that community, gives them meaning and purpose. It does a lot of things of like what tradi religion traditionally would do, but it also leads them down a path towards violence and some of them get seriously injured in the process of them trying to fight police or assault people. And then they're just kind of discarded. The churches haven't done their work. In many cases, the churches do not represent a Bible version of Jesus but offer instead empty repetitions of the mainstream narrative. Whatever that narrative is, they rinse, lather, and repeat. No wonder so many churches seem powerless. God's people must do more than read off of those narrative cue cards. We become deeply secularized, and many woke are actually sleeping. I want to conclude now with something, though, that I regard as hopeful. A Virginia school teacher who said no more and refused to continue inflicting these toxic ideologies onto children. Listen. My name is Laura Morris. I have been a teacher in Loudoun County Public Schools for five years and a teacher for 10. In that time, I have learned so much, being on the cutting edge of educational technology and working with a diverse population of students that I have loved. This year, I have the privilege to follow my amazing fourth graders up to fifth, and I have been excited about this all summer. On the other hand, this summer, I have struggled with the idea of returning to school knowing that I'll be working yet again with a school division that despite its shiny tech and flashy salary, promotes political ideologies that do not square with who I am as a believer in Christ. 
After reading about your lack of consideration for the growing population of concerned citizens in this division, clearly evidenced by this empty room tonight where you shut the doors to the public as well as the emails sent by the superintendent last year reminding me that a dissenting opinion is not allowed even to be spoken in my personal life, going so far as to send a form to my colleagues and I encouraging us to fill it out if we hear one another speaking against the controversial policies being promoted by this school board and adopted in this county. Not only that, but within the last year, I was told in one of my so-called equity trainings that white, Christian, able-bodied females currently have the power in our schools and that, quote, this has to change. Clearly, you've made your point. You no longer value me or many other teachers you've employed in this county. So since my contract outlines the power that you have over my employment in Loudoun County Public Schools, I thought it necessary to resign in front of you. School board, I quit. I quit your policies, I quit your trainings, and I quit being a cog in a machine that tells me to push highly politicized agendas on our most vulnerable constituents, the children. I will find employment elsewhere. I encourage all parents and staff in this county to flood the private schools in the county area. She's refusing any longer to participate in the abolition of man. Well, then we come to us. We have to decide if we will continue to go along with the lies that we're being coerced into supporting or whether we'll be agents of truth. See, it really comes down to truth or fiction. That's what it is. It's truth or fiction. If we will admit it, many of us have lost our way without meaning to. We have become cowards. Many are not only standing by watching the destruction of the civilization, but they actively join in in the bulldozing of it. Are you waiting for someone to come and save you from the hard work of sustaining your world? We must each do what we can within godly principle to light the torch of truth in the world and stop the further encroachment of wokeness in our homes, in our churches, in communities. We have to come back to what the Bible says. We ought to obey God rather than men.